President. Don't go near the door. Sir, it's Thomas. I have your inhaler and wallet. Don't come in. Don't go near the door. Mr. President, are you in danger? Should we enter? Tom, take your hand off the doorknob. It's rigged to explode if you open it. Sir, exit through the other doors or through the windows. They're all rigged to explode. Tom, have you got a good memory? Yes, sir. I'd say so. Okay. You gotta follow my orders exactly, or we're dead. You understand? No, sir. I don't understand. I don't care. Look, one, do not touch any doorknob. Two, take four agents, but one on each door. No one enters. You got that? Okay, three, get the senior bomb disposal man and have him come to the White House in absolute secrecy. Okay? Four, get me the Secretary of State, Michelle. Five, don't tell anyone anything about this. Above all, don't tell my wife. And six, Six, Mr. President. Pray for me, Tom. Sir, what's going on? Tom, we're in a jam. If anyone opens any of these doors, I'm a dead man. That's clear, sir. I'll carry out your orders and report right back. Okay. Oh my god. These damn terrorists. When are they gonna leave me alone? The more I try to be diplomatic, the more they take advantage. Animals! Savages! Mr. President, could you please explain what's happening to us? We're doomed to die. What? At least one billion people want the President of the United States die. Correct. And this time the plan to kill me is a very good one. All of you, read the email. The center is so bizarre. Bizarre? I have to get out of here. I gotta call my wife. Stay calm, James. Calm my ass, this place is gonna blow up! Keep it going, James. That's not gonna happen. We've got 24 hours to come up with a solution, and the president is our guarantee. You're definitely not gonna let the president die without doing everything possible, man. So now I've gone from being Mr. President to just a guarantee. I do feel much better now. If I were to die here now, I'd make history. And that's my life purpose. Well, then you can rest in your coffin. Nobody is going to die here. You're the president. They'll be doing every single thing in their power to get you out of this situation alive. Well, I hope so. Mr. President, it would make me feel much better if you didn't say, I certainly hope so. Son, the only thing certain in life is death and taxes. And today, that is true more than ever. Let's just wait for the bomb disposal unit and see what they, they come up with. I'll give them the doors and the windows and the desk phone, but how can they rig his cell phone? Who knows? We don't even know who we're dealing with. Their plan's clear to me. Let's for a minute presume it's all true. Imagine that their leader didn't get to say goodbye to his friends and loved ones. So now they want the same thing to be true for hours. Kill me after isolating me. But they couldn't do it anyway. Wait, 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 wait. I think I've got it. But if I'm right, Mr. President, I've got some bad news. I think I've got it too.
Someone close to me wants me dead. Yes, sir. No. I think there's someone who wants you dead and is using the president's staff. They could be blackmailing them, threatening them. Or corrupting. <laughs> Maybe. Sir, the email states that numerous negotiations had failed. I know nothing about that. And even if you did, you certainly wouldn't tell us. I told you I know nothing about it. Here it says, having been unable to reach a conclusion despite the numerous negotiations with your government, we have unanimously decided to execute you, Mr. President. Blah, blah, blah. I know blah. nothing about that, period. Just let's wait for the bomb disposal unit to come here and they'll save us. I somehow doubt that, sir. Why do you say that? It's practically impossible to defuse a bomb you can't see, sir. So how do we get a, a damn picture of the damn bomb out of this damn room? There's no damn way. Of course. Can't send a photo over a cell. Have you got a printer, sir? No. And even if there was, the doors are sealed and bulletproof. You can't even slip a piece of paper under it. Shit! Wait a sec. Who triggered the bombs after you came in? What do you mean? The Secret Service, Mr. President. The last men to leave the room. Thomas and Jerry. It could be them, sir. I don't want to believe that. They could have done it by remote, sir. These have micro antennas, so they easily could have left the room and then triggered the bombs. I'm sorry, sir. I always trusted them. So that means I might have asked for help from one of the very men who wants to kill me. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid so. Sorry. We get it, you're sorry. 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 So the email was sent by radio? It's impossible, Mr. President. The wireless is it's disabled. OK. You're all promoted. From now on, you're all personal advisors to the President of the United States. Any and every idea is welcome. I told you we wouldn't be working for the President, but with the President. You'd be wise to remember the difference. Mr. President, it's Thomas. Mr. President. Mr. President, please say something. I'm here, Tom. There are 11 bombs, and they've been activated by remote control. But you already knew that, didn't you, Tom? I don't understand, Mr. President. How could I know that? I always trusted you, Tom. I'm still not following, sir. Are you feeling well? Have you been injured? Yeah, by you. Me? Mr. President, what have they done to you? Nothing. Think about what you've done, you bastard. Who did you sell out to, you shit? And how did you send the email? What email? Tom, are you alone? No, the Secretary of State and the Senior Bomb Disposal Officer are here. Who do you want to speak to first? Give me a second. I'll stay right here. Mr. President? If he really wants you dead, bringing a bomb disposal expert ain't the best strategy. Definitely not. But it could be a tactic. And he didn't answer the question. He feigned innocence. Maybe James is right. Have you noticed that today I am always right? Mr. President, who do you want to speak to first? And what were you trying to say before? I don't understand. We were wrong. He wouldn't have come back. 
Tom, I'll explain it to you later. Let me speak to the bomb disposal expert. He's right here. His name is Max Wheatans, head of the third unit of the- How's the situation, Mr. President? How do you think it is? Bad. Have you got any way of showing me what the devices look like, sir? Unfortunately, no. Try asking Tom. Miss Porter. It'll be difficult to move forward without being able to see them, Mr. President. If we could describe it to you, would you be able to tell us how to disarm it? I studied 20 years to be able to do what I do, sir. I don't think you could learn it in 20 minutes. Mr. President, may I try to explain? Go ahead. They're very simple explosive devices. There's physical contact with the armored door frames, the windows, and the main telephone line. Two wires connect with an integrated circuit mounted in a small dose of orange plastic explosive. And there's some sort of micro antenna coming from the circuit. A classic. Open up one of the doors or windows or cut the wires and the charge explodes. Have you found out how many there are? Ten. The 11th hasn't got contact. Um, it's got a, a larger antenna. Uh, we think it's been calibrated to the cell frequencies. Uh, I'd have to get in there with my equipment to assess the situation. Without equipment, there's not a whole lot you can do in there. Tommy, is the Secretary of State still there with you? Yes, she's here at the door. Hi, Michelle. Mr. President. We're trapped in here, huh? So it would seem, sir. But we're studying alternative strategies. We're going to get all of you out of there. I hope so. Michelle, get something to record with and send everyone else away. I have something very important to read to you. Mr. President, though it may seem impossible to you, this missive is being sent to you from a planet far, far from planet Earth. The one writing to you is your own equal as the president of the most powerful nation on our planet. And with this message, we want to condemn actions taken by your government in the Earth year 1947. We demand the return of our diplomatic spaceship which crash-landed in Roswell, New Mexico on July 2nd, 1947, and which you have kept since then in your military base which you call Area 51. We demand the return of the bodily remains of its three occupants which you captured and subjected to torturous experiments, including the body of the then leader of our country. Reliable sources have communicated to us that our leader, who reached your planet with the intent of building diplomatic relations, was subjected to a full Earth Day of these horrible experiments. Having been unable to reach a conclusion despite the numerous negotiations with your government, we have unanimously decided to execute you, Mr. President, according to the method you reserved for our leader in 1947. Lethal explosive charges have been placed in the room where you find yourself to prevent any possibility of survival. If any door or window is opened or any cell phone or landline telephone call is made, the bombs will explode. The bombs will explode regardless 24 hours from now. Thus, justice will be done. We have reserved the following 24 hours for you to spend in agony until your certain death just as it was for our heroic predecessor. It is with great regret that we should execute you for the faults of your predecessor, but he who comes after shall reap the inheritance of he who came before. We strike today simply because your highly efficient security services have prevented a successful plan for the last 60 years. This is not the beginning of a war, but the end of an injustice. Seeing as you are Catholic, entrust your soul to your God. Goodbye, Mr. President. Michelle? I'm in shock, Mr. President. Terrorists? Another plan to strike without leaving a trace of those responsible. How did the bombs get in the Oval Office? 
I need time to think this over, sir. So is this something I don't know about Roswell and Area 51? Please, Mr. President, I need time to make sense of this. I'm going to call John and Roscoe for a meeting in the Situation Room, then I'll report back, sir. Well, come back to me as soon as, uh, as you can and let me know what's going on. I don't want to be here alone. Alone, Mr. President? I'd race in there in a minute for the honor of dying with you. I'll be right back. Don't make me waste any more time. Wait, Michelle. Michelle! God. Uh, let's maybe avoid the room blowing up before it's time. Of course, James. I'm sorry. You're right. Yet again. Mr. President, it's already been an hour and a half. 22 hours and 30 minutes till the end. I don't think this is the time for the countdown. Actually, it is. I want to know how much longer I have to live. They're going to get us out of here. I have a wife and two kids, sir. Luke and Leia. They're twins. Like the twins in Star Wars. You really are a field fanatic. I said they're going to get us out of here. And I have a wife and a son also. Wait. Let's detonate one of the bombs and take cover. That one. And we'll use your desk as a shield and escape through the hole. And how do we set it off? Oh yeah, whoever opens the door is dead. Even from the outside. We could drill a hole in the ceiling and crawl out through there. What's above the Oval Office, sir? The Secretary of State Michelle's office. Is that possible, sir? I wouldn't rule it out. But if a wall were to move, even an inch, if by chain reaction a window were to open... Boom. Michelle? Did you track everyone down? Mr. President, the email isn't on the White House server. I had them search for it everywhere, even in the hidden file records. It's a mystery. Is everyone here? Not yet, sir. I need a bit more time. Well, where the hell are they? They're supposed to be on hand, aren't they? One is here in Washington, Mr. President, and the other is on his way. Another is in New York, and I've given him orders to take a private plane and return here immediately, and then... And then what? Sir, a procedure doesn't call for it, but I've decided to contact General Lee as well. He's on his way now. The military. Michelle, we're not at war. Are you hiding something from me? Answer me! Mr. President, there may be secret military secrets, and that's why I call the General. Secrets? Huh? Military secrets. I knew there was something. I knew there was oh, something. Oh, shit! Oh, fucking shit! What? Incoming calls! Shit! What's going on, sir? Quiet, Michelle. A signal, sir. A signal going out is the same as one coming in. If anyone calls, we're all gonna blow. Oh, shit! Turn off the phones! Mr. President, please! Quiet, Michelle! Fuck! No! Turn it off, sir! Quickly! It's gonna blow! are always the problem. <laughs> Listen, how am I going to explain to my wife, the first lady, that as soon as I saw her name, I smashed my phone to bits? <laughs> Tell her you weren't busy with me. I am an intern after all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that hurts. Sir, for the love of God, what's going on in there? Sir, answer us. Relax, I'm just having a few laughs with my friends in here. Oh, oh shit, it's not over. What? Their phone's out there. If they're within range of the antennas, they have to turn off their phones too. 
Turn their phone off! Who? Everyone's phone is off now! Why? Because if a phone goes off in the vicinity of the Oval Office, it will explode and we will die. Oh my God, right away! Everyone, listen to me carefully. All cell phones must be turned off immediately. Alert all personnel. That's it. I can't take it! Miss Porter, please calm down. Calm down my ass, Mr. President. I want out of here! We all want out of here. I can't take it anymore! Sandra, you... You shut up! You are the President of the United States. Get us out of here! Miss Porter, that's enough! His name is Harry, but he's not Houdini. Enough, you whiny bitch! We're all in the same shit. No offense, Mr. President. No, that's okay. At this point, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If we live or if we die, whether you keep screaming or whether you shut up, you bitch! God. You fuck up, oh. you lousy poor technician! Please calm yourselves down! No! I've been calm long enough! Great, the hysterical intern. <gasps> fuck off! This border! And seeing as it wasn't your guards who set the bombs. Well, now, who was it then? Huh? Who was it? And who would that be? Let's hear it now. Why don't we just tell things the way they are? Oh yeah? Let's hear how it is. Let me hear it. Access in here is totally free to only two people who could bring a bomb in here. Isn't that right? No, because everyone goes through security in the metal detector. Oh yeah? No one? Don't feed us that bullshit, Mr. President! No one. Maybe you haven't noticed it, Missy, but we're in the White House. And we have the best security in the world. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Mr. President. Top-level security forces that someone can plant 11 bombs and remain unnoticed. Wow, nice security there. My compliments to the United States of America. Top-level security cannot foresee unforeseeable actions. Or perhaps top security overlooks a close relative. What are you insinuating? That insane, fanatic son of yours! He's a deranged lunatic and everyone knows it! And we are gonna end up paying for his insanity with our lives! Ah! Mr. President, please, I voted for you. And no one thing for certain that if we get out of here alive, it's gonna be really hard for you to pay me off. Mr. President. Now all of you, be quiet and listen to me. Mr. President. I said, be quiet. I order you to sit down and remain silent. And let it be clear to you that if- Shut up and sit down! Mr. President, we've shut off all the telephones as well as all radio transmission systems. How are things going in there? Everything is fine, Thomas. Keep with the Secretary of State and bring me John Hillen as soon as he gets here. He's on his way, Mr. President. We won't resolve the situation by yelling and screaming. Mr. President. What, James? Are you sure your son's innocent? Yes. Oh, great. And why is that? Innocent simply because he's your son? No. So why? Why exclude him from the outset? Because for the last two weeks, he's been in London attending college. That's a pretty good alibi. <laughs> Did 
Dimes. Hmm? You're pretty good at uh, name games, right? First and last names? Um, I guess so, sir. What I mean earlier is Houdini, whose name was Harry. Yeah, I just like to make the connections. <laughs> it's fun. Some of the coincidences are pretty crazy, you know? Like your wife, for instance. My wife? Her name's Sally, right? So? When Harry met Sally. You've lost your right to say another word until this crisis is over. I suppose it's pointless to offer an apology. Apology accepted. But I wouldn't even give you the White House switchboard operator job now. Mr. President, did you have to slap her? It's one of the few ways I know to stop an hysterical Italian woman from acting crazy. I already apologized. Miss Porter, make an investment in your future by not saying another word unless I ask you. Your son's name is David, right? So? Copperfield. Making things explode from a distance. <laughs> Mr. President, John is here. Hi, John. What a mess. Who saw this one coming, Mr. President? Well, I would have hoped that one of your people would have seen this coming. I'm not sure what you're alluding to, sir. How are you? How would you be, John, if you were trapped in this office with 11 bombs ready to explode and no way out? I'm not your scapegoat, Mr. President. I don't know how to help you out of there, nor, frankly, is it my job. It is your job to prevent this sort of plan. Mr. President, please calm down. I'm not calming down. You're the director of the FBI. May I remind you that I appointed you? So no, it isn't your job to get me out of here, but it is your job to stop some bastard from putting 11 bombs in the White House. No, Mr. President, that is a Secret Service duty. May I remind you of the report I sent you a few days ago via email outlining the dangerous and possibly fatal results of cutbacks and corner cutting? I never got that email. Nothing fucking works here. Mr. President, now is not the time to... Now is not the time? The director of the FBI sends me an email that I don't get. But I do get an email from aliens when my computer's offline. That's not our fault, sir. It's not your fault. Well, then whose fault is it? And besides, I'm the one who decides whose fault it is. This was a completely unforeseeable plan, sir. You know the saying as well as I do. However improbable, if you eliminate the impossible, what remains is possible. You want to quote Sherlock Holmes to me? The actual quote is when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Either way, Mr. President, there's still a piece missing, and that is excluding the imponderable. John, I want you to take Michelle and interrogate her until she tells you what she is hiding from me. Mr. President, let's wait for Edward to get here. I don't have time to wait for anybody. I have given you a presidential order. If we wait any longer, I'm going to be a dead man. To be specific, sir, less than 21 hours. You heard that, Michelle? In less than 21 hours, the vice president is going to have his fat ass sitting at my desk. Well, actually, it'd be a different desk, sir. This one will be blown up across the White House lawn along with our remains. Speaking of which, where is the vice president? What do you mean, where, Mr. President? He's in Zimbabwe. Oh, great. Hello, Mr. Vice President. Yes, we need you to come back to the White House immediately because the president's body is blown all over the White House. Yes, yes, you're alive in Zimbabwe. But the president is dead in the White House. Congratulations. Like what happened to Truman when Roosevelt died. John, 
I'll give you 10 minutes to find out what Michelle is hiding from me. Michelle, follow me, please. John, you don't really... I'll return shortly, sir. Meanwhile, I'd advise you to keep calm. Michelle, follow me, please. John, you don't really... I'll return shortly, sir. Meanwhile, I'd advise you to keep calm. I already told you, you'll speak when you're spoken to. But I don't have to speak. So why'd you raise your hand? <clears throat> I have to go to the bathroom. What do you mean? I don't think there's any other way to put it. I have to go to the bathroom. <clears throat> of course, and sooner or later there's going to be a problem for all of us. I should also say, I have high blood pressure, so I'm on a diuretic and I have to go like every two hours. <clears throat> so what should I do? Hold it. This may seem strange to you, but there's no bathroom in the Oval Office. You don't have to go? Now that you mention it, I have to go too. Well, first of all, let's draw a distinction. Between men and women? No. A person can have two possible motives for needing to go to the bathroom. Oh, in case of women, three. But it's not the time for me. To avoid embarrassment when we're out in public with the twins, we call it the big one and the little one. <laughs> okay, well, we can adopt this uh, discreet terminology. Miss Porter, do you have to do the big one or the little one? The little one. For now. Me too. I, uh, I'm afraid I, uh, I'll go after lunch. What lunch? Damn! No food or drink? And maybe tomorrow we'll even die. Without eating, drinking, peeing, or shitting. James! No, 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 you're right, James. Let's call things the way they are. There's no reason for manners or etiquette. Uh, I don't think I can resist much longer. You can't? I'm on a diuretic. Every time I move, it's like a monkey is jumping on my bladder. Well, remain seated. That way the problem's solved. Sir, I've already held it a really long time. Fine, we'll do it in the fireplace. We'll take turns. Who's first? I don't gotta go. Neither do I. Miss Porter, the fireplace is all yours. Thank you, sir. Being gentlemen, we're not going to watch. You two come on over here. We can't see anything, but we can't avoid hearing everything. I got an idea, though. I'll sing, so you won't hear a sound, okay? Well, that's a shame. The sound is the best part. Ooh, I'd rather hear her sing. Entertain us, Miss Porter. And I try, oh my God, no, I try. I try all the time for his institution. And I say, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, 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 yeah, yeah. I say, hey, what's going on? I'm finished. You can turn around. My turn. Uh, just so you know, you can watch as much as you'd like. 
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the home of the brave. You don't have to go, Mr. President. Not now. I still got to think of what song to sing. Three o'clock. Nineteen and a half hours. Mr. President, General Edward Lee has arrived. Good afternoon, General. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Is Michelle there with you? No, Mr. President. She's still in with Hillen. What's your take on things? Well, first off, sir. I'm quite disappointed by intel, communications, and screening here in the White House, but that's beside the point. I'm not all that disturbed by the fact that you received an email while your computer was offline, but I do admire a terrorist able to carry out a plan that's quiet, invisible, and effective. And if there really are aliens? With all due respect, Mr. President, with the exception of a few molecules found on some rocks fallen from space, there has never been any concrete evidence of alien life. General, please come as close to the door as possible. Thomas, uh, leave us alone here for a while. I'm alone, Mr. President. General Lee, it's clear to me that there are things that all of you are not telling me. Now, please don't make me waste any more time. I don't have time to waste. Very well, then. Where to begin, Mr. President? I know the exact location of every one of our nation's nuclear weapons and the identity of the SEAL team member who was responsible for the death of bin Laden. I would also have knowledge of the existence of extraterrestrial beings, if there were any. But regardless, I wouldn't give you any of this information for two reasons. Firstly, it would serve you no good. Secondly, you would politically impede a course which must be exclusively military in nature. If you find just cause, remove me when you get out of there. Oh, you can count on that. However, Mr. President, I'm afraid you won't get out of there easily. I know who has put you in this situation, and we're not dealing with an adversary easy to defeat. We will attempt to do so, but the probability is quite low. Well, tell me at least, is it friendly fire? No, Mr. President. They're our enemies, and we provoke them with our usual presumptuousness born of arrogance. Well, tell me who they are. Are you going to disobey a direct order from the President of the United States? I'm sorry, Mr. President. I should fire you and have you court-martialed. That is your choice, Mr. President. But I still won't tell you anything more. But how can you let a president just die? We're ants, and they're dinosaurs, Mr. President. We should have thought of that beforehand. Sir, I'm so sorry. But it's, it's not, it's not my fault. He who comes after shall reap the inheritance of he who came before. I don't know who said that, but it's a chunk of wisdom. A famous alien proverb. General? One of the two fiber optic specialists working in here, and we've been talking and developed some hypotheses. Young man, I've participated in four wars, 
Now you arrive with your little toolbox and presume to resolve the crisis? We can't dig down because of an anti-atomic wall, and we can't drill a hole through the Oval Office ceiling because the vibrations would provoke an explosion. Now you see, it's a shame aliens don't exist. After all, because we'd be able to ask them to teleport you all out of there. So what are we supposed to do? Pray, Mr. President. Now I'm going back to the Situation Room. Our tasks are divided. We save you, the FBI discovers how they got in, and the CIA lays blame on a foreign terrorist. I'm afraid that no one is going to manage that. Tell me who it is that wants me dead. Irrelevant. Or rather, go ahead and believe what you read. Blame it on the aliens, the most powerful ones in the universe. At least that way, you'll give yourself some peace. Edward, please. Again? You want to laugh? It's that missing email from the FBI. Better late than never. And we're still offline, right? Of course. I can't live without Sally. The problem is, Mr. President, it's gonna be Sally that has to live without you. I wonder how many times she's called me and I smashed her phone to bits. Mr. President, let me ask you a question to reverse the pessimistic tendency that we established this last few hours. Go ahead. What will happen to the four of us if we do get out of here alive? Harry? Who said that? What? Just now, someone spoken. In a squeaky voice. Maybe someone's at the door? No, 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 it was inside. Inside the room. So now he is hearing voices. She's right, the little whore? Just now, it, it said, she's a little whore. Referring to Sandra? Yes. What? The voice said, you're a little whore. Say that again if you're there. I didn't say it. The voice said it. Mr. President! President Carroll! The end is near! There it is again. Oh shit, he's lost it. Tick tock! Tomorrow morning at 10 30. Boom! You did it. That's right. 
Who are you? I'm not telling. He who comes after shall reap the inheritance of he who came before. Then let them go. I'm the one who shall reap the inheritance of whomever wronged you, not them. Harry, maybe you should get some rest. Seriously. Try it for yourself! Try it! Oh, <laughs> I'm not falling for that. Uh-uh. As you like it, I just want to help you. It's all in your mind! They're all just humoring you. It's just a little game. They're fucking with you. <laughs> it's, it's just a game. Mr. President. No, no, it's, it's just a game. I'm afraid not. No. I mean, <laughs> why, why didn't I think of that before? Think of what? I mean, this whole thing, it, it's, it's absurd. It's not for real. Harry, you're losing it. I mean, the email arriving offline, then, then the bombs. I mean, no, I mean, this is the best security system in the world in the White House. And my own people, they're, they're hiding something from me. No, no, no. Mr. President, I think the stress is getting to you, man. That voice, it's all in your head. If I open one of those doors, nothing's gonna happen. That's not true. No, nothing's gonna happen at all. Watch. No, no. Let me the door. Is real. No, it's not all real! No, don't! No, all it takes is courage, and I've got that. One, two, three! You see? Nothing happened. Harry Potter. <laughs> Mr. President, it's Michelle. Come to the door right away. <laughs> Michelle, who's there with you? General Lee, John, and Roscoe, sir. Oh, Roscoe. The wiretapping genius. Even at death's door, Mr. President. We may have some good news, sir. Roscoe, you know what I'd do if you were in here and I was out there? No, Mr. President, tell me. I would dance all night and wait for the inevitable explosion. Thank you, sir. You're too kind. I, on the other hand, may have come up with an idea to save you. Who is that guy? Roscoe Hoover, director of the CIA. You? Save my life, huh? Or maybe you'd like to stay holed up in there, Mr. President. Pardon me, sir. Mr. Hoover's idea is a doable one. Okay, let's hear it. We'll provoke the explosion of one of the doors from the outside. You take cover behind an artificial barrier built from the desk, the two sofas, the cabinets, and chairs. You may get wounded, sir, but our explosion would be mild and controlled. That was my idea. Yeah, great freaking idea. And if the explosion triggers one of the bombs in here? Have you spoken to the bomb expert? He's here with us, Mr. President. Max? Right here, sir. Does Hoover's plan sound reasonable to you? It's the only choice we've got, sir. Mr. President, like I said, we can neither dig nor drill through the ceiling. Vibrations mean explosions. The General's right, sir. Shall we proceed, Mr. President? Max, tell me the truth. What is the probability that the explosion would trigger off those bombs in here? Sir, it's the only solution. I didn't ask you. I asked Max. Answer me, please. Well, sir. Do you have family, Max? Yes, I, I'm separated and have two children, sir. What are their names? George and Stephen, sir. Okay. 
If George and Stephen were trapped in here with us, would you set off the bomb? Max. No, I wouldn't do it, Mr. President. What percent of probability? 100%. The terrorist bomb would explode too, sir. Mr. President. You're an asshole, Roscoe. Max, thank you. Cancel the operation. Who's outside the window? Oh, must be the bomb squad. Mr. President, it's Lee here. Yes, General. Hey, Roscoe, you're fired. Sooner or later, sir, we're going to need to give it a try. There will be no risky operations attempted. Is that clear? That's an order. We still have 16 hours and 10 minutes. So come up with another idea. Build a bunker out of the furniture? How'd they find these guys? And this is la creme de la creme. Huh? Just think whose hands we're in. Mr. President. What do you still want? We can't keep the news in the dark for much longer, sir. We need to place the blame on someone. Oh, well, oh, sure. Uh, let's say it was uh, Saddam Hussein. Oh, wait, he's dead. Uh, how about uh, Gaddafi? Oh, he's dead too. Bin Laden, no, oh, he's dead. Uh, what about Syria? No. North Korea, no. Uh, how about Pakistan? Now that would cause World War III. So what about uh, some South American country? Ecuador? Peru? No. Russia. Russia. Classics always come back, no? Just like in the arts. Russia! Mr. President. John, I should fire your ass too. Now get out of here and don't you dare tell anyone about anything that's happened here today. This is a present I got from my 10-year-old niece, Tara. And I'm gonna share it with my new three friends. So, for the beautiful woman, a beautiful bracelet. me how he flew. I was still governor at the time. Now, you don't want to take that secret to the grave with you, do you? Come on, Harry. How'd he do it? It's a trick, but I won't tell you. <sighs> Did you ever think, I mean, just for like a split second, that he really could fly? No, I don't believe in anything irrational. 
Well, just a little while ago, you were thinking aliens might exist. That was the first irrational thought I've had in my entire life. I, I don't want to change the subject, but um, it's been an hour and a half since we heard from anyone. Do you know how far away the next solar system is that has planets that could support life? I, I don't know, a million miles? If you were traveling at the speed of light, which is impossible to do, it would take you 600,000 years to get there. So you're saying aliens can't exist? No, they definitely exist. I'm saying it's just technically improbable for them to make contact. Improbable or impossible? Really, really improbable. However improbable, if you eliminate the impossible, what remains is the possible. Quoting Sherlock Holmes to me? <laughs> no, I think it was, if you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. It's unlikely, but it is possible. My gut feeling tells me we're not too far from the impossible. And for a moment, I believed it. Believed what? That David Copperfield could fly. I really wished he could fly. Why is that? Because we can't live in a world without dreams, without fantasy, without magic. I mean, what kind of magician named Harry would I be? Harry. Carrie. The flying president. It's almost midnight. What the hell's going on out there? Here I am, Mr. President. Well, where are Michelle and the others? They do know it's almost midnight, don't they? They're stuck in the situation room, sir. They didn't even want to eat. What should I do? Well, go down there, please, and see what's going on, okay? Thanks, Tommy. I'm going to the fireplace, but you can all just stay here if you want. Don't bother moving. I need to sleep for a little bit. Are you kidding, Harry? This may be the last night of your life and you want to spend it sleeping. Wow. <gasps> Come on, let's stay away, talking. We, we said we're friends, didn't we? Sandra, this is the last night of our lives. Maybe. You don't want to deprive us of our last night to have sex, do you? <laughs> Are you kidding? Not at all. You know, James is right. You should give yourself to the cause. Have you ever been with three men at the same time? Aside from the fact that even if I had, I wouldn't say so. But anyway, no. Ah, uh, if that were true, you would have said so right away and you wouldn't have prefaced it. I mean, think about it. It's true. Last night of your life with the most powerful man in the world. President of the United States. And two fiber optic specialists. One. Oh, right. But yeah, you ought to give yourself to the cause. Thanks, Dan. So? So, no way, I've got my dignity. Great, 
so you and your dignity can keep each other company in your coffin. So, we're not getting any nookie? <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> I, I I totally fell for it. <laughs> and you cheat on Sally? You'd have gotten naked in front of everyone just to have me? Of course. Why not? What am I worried that she's going to walk in on us? <laughs> <gasps> That'd be a pretty explosive headline. <laughs> so no communication, no food, no water, and no sex. What a shitty way to end things. I'm here, Michelle. Have you guys come up with a plan? No, sir. You're done for. We're leaving you in there. It's right for you to die, Mr. President. What? The aliens are right, Mr. President. Someone has got to pay. You guys gone crazy? What the fuck are you saying? Are you all right, Mr. President? Is Michelle there with you? No, sir. My nerves are shot. I'm hallucinating. Mr. President, listen to me carefully. To begin with, tomorrow we will proceed with Hoover's plan. Great. Every day someone else is putting bombs in the Oval Office. Okay. You're the only one I trust, General. Yesterday afternoon, I told you a number of things. Secrets as well as secret military secrets. What are you trying to tell me, General? Is everyone really asleep in there, sir? Yes. Mr. President, how about you try to guess and I'll just negate there is no other way, sir, because if you were to survive, given your integrity, I'm sure that you wouldn't be able to keep silent when you change the course of humanity. So there is something secret that I don't know. You know nothing, sir. No president has ever known anything. But I'm not the one talking. I'm just a listener. Take a shot. Terrorists? No, sir. Foreign governments? No, sir. Americans who want revenge for something. Again, no, sir. All right, my next question is, and I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. I'm listening, sir. Do aliens from other planets exist? Forgive us for having hurt our brothers who came to us in peace from far, far away. Admonish and forgive those who abuse their power in the name of science. Lord, receive me 
in the peace of your heavenly paradise. Please give my family the serenity they deserve after I die. And forgive us for having killed without reason other living creatures of yours. And I pray it doesn't happen again. Oh, please forgive us, Lord. Wake up, folks. When you're fully awake, I need to talk to you. Uh, the White House is really uncomfortable. Well, file your complaint with management when we leave the room. Leave the room? Come on, wake up! So they're gonna rig one of the doors to explode? So they're going with my idea. Have you noticed that today, I'm always right? Yes, and I've agreed to it. It's worth a try. You know what I'll regret the most? What? That if it doesn't work, we'll never know who killed us. Harry, is there something you're not telling us? No. Harry, come on. Yesterday you talked about us being friends. You gave me a snow globe. There's something you know, it's only fair you share it with your new pals. I can't. I heard you talking to the general last night. What'd they tell you? I can't. I said I can't, and that's that. There's something about Sandra you're not telling us. What? Me? What did they say to you, Harry? Nothing. Just relax. I've suspected you from the beginning. Me? You've got it all wrong, guys. Let him speak. Yeah. You, you're on your fifth internship. Who knows which politician you conspired with? What are you saying? How could I have gotten explosives in here? With help? You probably seduced someone who, like the Secret Service, the White House security, the guy with the wand? Come to think of it, it is a little weird that you call yourself Sandra, but your last name is Porter. I don't believe that for a second. And why not? Because Porter is Sandra Bullock's last name in the movie Speed, a film in which, what a coincidence, a bus is rigged to explode if it slows down. Oh my God. Your first name is Harry, the same as President Truman, and your last name is Carey, just like Jim Carey, who played the main character in The Truman Show. And your last name is Truman. Well, I am as much of a movie buff as you are, you know, and your names and last names didn't elude me either. Really? These two called themselves Dan Dale and James Truman. Right? So if we invert their first and last names, we've got Dan Truman, the director of NASA in Armageddon, and James Dale, the president of the United States in Mars Attacks, both of which try to save the world, one from a meteorite and the other one from the aliens. So what shall we say about that, huh? And furthermore, just to put a cherry on top, James has two children who are named after the two greatest extraterrestrials in cinema history. So, I don't think those are your real names at all. So, you two are spies! Sandra Porter, that's not even a real name. Show us your ID. Show yours. Fine. None of you have them because you guys left them at reception. So, and neither do I. So we could be anyone at all. Really. I mean, they are playing some serious games with us. That means they've chosen us one by one over all these years based on our first and last names. I mean, that's incredible, admirable intelligence. What the hell are you doing? Showing Harry who you really are. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, it's not my 
I don't know how it got in there. Sandra! You bitch! You... You put it in there! You dead Give man! Master! Master! So they're gonna rig one of the doors to explode. So they're going with my idea. Have you noticed that today, I'm always right? Wasting time. But why are we still here? I'm gonna kill you, you stupid fucking voice. Go away. Go away! You think you can catch me? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! What are you doing? You're an alien, aren't you? Huh? A alien? Yes, an alien, but one who wants to help you. Fuck off. He's completely lost it. Stop and listen to me. You don't know this, but there is a tunnel under your desk. Ronald Reagan had it built. You're lying to me. That's not true. I have no idea what's going on inside this guy's head. He was afraid the Russians would come and that he couldn't escape in time. <laughs> Clever, Ronald. That's not true! Well, why don't you check? And if it's true, then from now on, you do everything I say. Deal? Okay. Deal! Hey guys, help me move the desk, come on. What are you doing? I'm trying to throw a Hail Mary pass to win the game. Come on! Now he's doing whatever the voice is in his head tell him to do. Wow! And don't pay any attention to that moron! Oh. First she was a little whore, now she's a moron? Mm, I'm moving up with the charts. What exactly are we looking for according to the little voice in your head? There's a trap door under the desk. Harry, that's impossible. Well, we'll find out in a minute, won't we? Help me! Gotta hurry before I go back to the starting point. Open the trap door. Come on. Starting point? We've got to hurry, or I go back in time and it's an hallucination and there's no trap door. Come on. There really is. It's, it's right here, man. Harry, back where? What are you saying? Open it! I'll, I'll go.
This is just like in the movies. Harry, we're free. Thank you, God. God has nothing to do with it. It's me you have to thank. <laughs> and thank you, little voice. Long live the little voice in the head of <coughs> President of the United States. And you, who wouldn't even give herself to the cause. <laughs> Some gratitude. James. David didn't tell me. Didn't tell you what, sir? 
how he flies. He has a vest under his shirt with two steel cables attached and someone controls it by remote. Cool. You and I will see each other tomorrow morning. Really? Our interview was so rudely interrupted. But must go on, right? Yes. We'll take all the time we need. Harry, I didn't think we'd make it. Neither did I. Medals. We were lucky. When his phone rang, I thought we were done for. Yeah, how'd you let a detail like that slip by you? I'm sorry, I haven't been on this team for very long. They must be really expensive. No. They come from a place far, far away where everything costs a whole lot less. I found it. It, uh, it must be wireless. I can feel the antenna. You're available 24-7? You don't have a boyfriend, family? No, I'm single. After two and a half years, I was left by a policeman. He fell in love with a supermodel and from one day to the next, disappeared entirely. Give me his name and I'll have him transferred to Alaska. He didn't even realize that you'd attach the cables to send the email right to his computer. He suffered for 24 hours just like our leader did. Now he knows how it feels. Sooner or later, sir. We're going to need to give it a try. There will be no risky operations attempted. Is that clear? That's an order. Then let them go. I'm the one who shall reap the inheritance of whomever wronged you. Not them. You know, I kind of felt sorry for him, though. He was a good man. President. I'm going to kill you. You stupid fucking voice. Go away. Go away. You think you can catch me? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! He really lost it when I talked in his head. <laughs> Where are you doing? Getting us the hell out of here. No! It's not gonna go! Stop! And when he thought we were going to pull open the door? You were so mean. I was. What, and you? With your name games? He fell for all of it. Poor guy. You saved our lives. You defeated the bombers. Can you tell us who they are now? I'm sorry I can't. It's classified. He who comes after shall reap the inheritance of he who came before. Has safety been guaranteed to the one corrupted? Of course. I'm going to make sure no one has left the situation room, sir. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Finally, we're safe. You, you're not going to call Sally? Not yet. First, I'm gonna go down to the Situation Room, free the hostages. Then I'm gonna use myself a real bathroom, eat a beautiful apple, and then uh, go over to the residence. But first, I'm gonna answer that email. Uh, what will you write to them? Aliens, fuck off. <laughs> Mr. President. Yeah, Max. Guess what? What? This is not plastic explosive. This is Play-Doh. Play-Doh? Yeah. So we were never in any real danger? No. And this? This is Play-Doh too?
This is a real bomb. Oh, shit. United States, zero. 
<laughs> no, that would be aliens one, United States zero. <laughs> You again. What do you want from me? Let me suggest a solution for how to get you out of here. I told you I'd help you. Now listen to me very carefully. What's going on? Shut up! I'm about to hear a plan that might just get us out of here. Shut up!